when you have feelings, for example, of hate and resentment, the imaginative faculty will construct a world around your feelings. Now, we all know that, but I want you to know it's ancient. Maimonides talks about this in the 1100s. The Bible actually doesn't, doesn't teach about this in a uh, kind of an Aristotelian fashion, but certainly in a, in a narratival fashion, which I'll talk about in just a few moments. So when the rabbis talk about sinat chinam, gratuitous hatred, there's actually a little play here on the word chinam, because the word chinam is from the word chen, which is grace. So for example, Torah is matanat chinam, a graciously given gift. So from their perspective, God says, I'll teach you how to live a good life. I don't want anything from you except to do it. It's a gracious gift. So uh, I look in Christianity. I mean, I think Christians really come from that rabbinic perspective that God gives a, an instruction out of grace where they talk about you know, the death of Jesus and the, and the promise of eternal life and resurrection. It's a gracious gift. So when they say sinat chinam, it's gratuitous hatred. It's hatred that is not deserved. It's hatred that you just say, you know, I, don't, I know you don't deserve this hatred. I just will graciously give you a gift of my hatred. You did nothing to deserve it, but I'm a, I'm a gracious person. Here's my hatred for you. So the rabbis are using the term, I, I think, ironically to say sinat chinam. And how does sinat chinam happen? People have internal worlds and these internal worlds build up, you might say, hatred and resentment. I'll just use those two. And then from that, we create narratives. And from that, we go after people. So for those of you who are newcomers to this, I will share with you the, the, the classic rabbinic story of how the second temp temple came down. So how many of you remember the story of the uninvited guest to the dinner? Okay, a few people. Okay. Um, so the story goes that a, uh, a man threw a, uh, a wealthy man threw a dinner, and um, he did not invite a notable person. And the notable person assumed there was an, uh, it was an oversight. So the notable person came to the dinner, and the uh, host said, threw him out. He said, you got to leave. I didn't invite you. And the guy looks around everybody at the dinner, and he said, look, this is very humiliating for me. I'll, I'll pay for my cost. Please let me stay. The host says, no. You can't pay for your dinner. The guy says, I'll pay for the whole dinner. You know, but please don't throw me out of here. The guy says, no, I don't want you at my dinner. So the story is told, it's obvious that the notable rabbis of Jerusalem are there. We would say sages. They weren't really rabbis. The sages are there. And he's waiting for them to speak up. Well, none of them speak up. Okay? Because they're all, they seem to be afraid of this notable, powerful guy. So nobody speaks up. You're kind of just waiting for this moment to pass. Like, will this man who's making everybody uncomfortable, will he just leave, get out of here? So the man is, is uh, kicked out of, the, out of the celebration. Well, that man at that moment, his heart is hardened toward the rabbis, the people at that dinner, and at some level, everybody in Jerusalem. Everybody. Hates everybody. So he passes on an evil report to the Roman government that there's a rebellion afoot. And then one thing after the another, you know, one tragic, tragic error after another results in the Roman war against, the, uh, against uh, Judea. And then um, the, uh, the, the radicals in Jerusalem take over, as oftentimes happened. You know, one problem with being a moderate is there are very few militant moderates. Um, so the militant radicals take over, and they say, yeah, we'll have war with the, uh, with the Romans. Uh, God will save us. Of course, God doesn't save us, and uh, Jerusalem is destroyed. But the rabbis don't blame it, especially on those radical people who had this belief that God would save them. I think maybe thinking from the, they went back to the Maccabees. Just as God saved the Maccabees, God will save us. Well, you know, when you read the story of the Maccabees, it's not, it's not so clear exactly what happened there. But it does not seem to be a miracle that, uh, that saved us. But they were, they were depending on a miracle. So the rabbis, they don't like the idea of militarism, confident that if you believe in God, God will save you. So that's one reason in the rabbinic liter literature, Hanukkah has been diminished. But the rabbis don't point at that. The rabbis point to themselves, the guys who stayed silent at the party. 
the guys who stay silent at the party, who permitted this atrocious inhospitality, and then the vengeance of the person who was disappointed. The rabbis see it all together. So the story of uh, uninvited guest is the paradigmatic story for the rabbis of, uh, of Sinat Chinam. That the smallest things can start to snowball within you and turn into vicious hatred. Oh, say shall.